Hi, welcome back to Chow with Chow. I'm at Maggiano's, and today we're going to be tasting and recreating their famous Rigatoni D. On this series, I'll be tasting delicious foods and trying to recreate them at home. Join me as I learn new things and find out what it takes to make amazing food. Vincent and I first found Maggiano's in Austin, and we fell in love with their pasta dishes. We actually went there so often that we became friends with the manager. And when it was our graduation dinner and we had our whole families there, the manager gifted me with this huge plate of desserts. It was amazing. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go and get my favorite pasta dish, Rigatoni D. Ah, Rigatoni D. Before I dig in, so I see rigatoni, of course, that makes sense. There's like a little white sauce around it, but it's not super thick. I wouldn't describe it like an Alfredo. It looks like just a light cream sauce. Caramelized onions, cute mushrooms. Look at these cute guys. So small. And chicken, good amount of chicken. Oh, smells so good. Okay, let me chomp in. Mmm. Nice and al dente, a nice little light creamy sauce on the outside. Oh, that's really good. Let me check out their grilled chicken. It looks like it's a whole piece of grilled chicken that they shred in there. So juicy. There's like herbs on the outside, and I think it might be grilled chicken breast. This is the perfect comfort food. I could eat this entire bowl. Mmm. It kind of reminds me of chicken alfredo, um, but a little sweeter, and it's got caramelized onions, and the sauce is like a little bit thinner. And I make pasta all the time at home for dinner, so I think I could recreate the sauce pretty well. Maggiano's pasta had this really light and creamy marsala sauce, so today when I'm recreating their rigatoni di, I want to try to really nail that. I think I can do it. They actually have a recipe online on their website, Magianos.com, and it tells you the entire recipe. But I read through it and I really think that they're leaving out some secrets. So I'm making a couple tweaks, but we'll see how it goes. The first thing we need to do is roast these marsh, oh, mushrooms, I always say marshmallows. <laughs> but we wanna roast these marshmallows. No, mushrooms, they're mushrooms. And we're also roasting these onions and some garlic. This is something I find a little questionable. Are we supposed to get caramelized onions from the oven? I don't know. I have never seen that happen before, but maybe it'll work. I don't know, because caramelized onions normally takes a long time, so I'd be shocked and excited. My oven is still heating up, but when it hits 450, we'll toss that in for 15 minutes. But now we get to start on our chicken. So I got chicken breasts, just like they said. And another thing that they're hiding from us, Remember when we ate the pasta and the chicken, it distinctly had an herb crust on it. They even describe it on their menu as an herb crusted chicken, but their recipe tells you to put a blank chicken breast in the pan. They're just, they're withholding information. So I took my chicken breasts, I butterflied them and I cut them in half and I also crusted it in some herbs. So I got fresh thyme, I got some Italian herb seasoning and salt and pepper. I also added just a teetle bit of cornstarch because it kind of softens up the meats and makes it nice and tender and juicy. I do not want it to be overcooked because dry chicken breast is the worst. My pasta water is boiling and I'm ready to toss this in. So I'm probably gonna use half of the box for Vincent and I for about two servings. And I think that will be the correct amount. I really recommend getting one of these little thermometers because it's really hard sometimes to check if something's ready without cutting it open. It's also foolproof, you can't mess it up. Okie dokie, now this pan with its gorgeous drippings, we gotta use this. We're going to hit it with some white wine. I'm also using this California Italian Marsala. Gorgeous. We're just gonna let this slowly simmer. You know, classic soft making. And it's starting to get like a sweet smell, but our mushrooms are ready! Dun, dun, dun. Cute. I would definitely not describe the onions as caramelized. I didn't think that was going to work. So now that it's reduced, I'm going to add in some heavy cream. They said I should have an entire cup, and I'm like, that is just a little too much heavy cream. So 
We'll see if we need it, but I'm gonna slowly stir this in. I accidentally forgot to add my cornstarch slurry. I have some chicken stock and cornstarch. Hopefully that doesn't mess it up too badly. I'll be honest, I'm pretty disappointed in this, you know, caramelized onion that they told us would work. How would a restaurant be successful if they gave away all their secrets? But I'm going to caramelize these onions up again because I think these onions deserve a little extra love. And look at how gorgeous it is, so nice and thick. Looking beautiful, it smells so good. Oh, hello, introduce you to your friends. Mmm. Ooh, our marsala sauce got nice and brown from the marshmallows. Oh, the mushrooms! <laughs> Before I dig in, when I'm looking at it, I have to say it looks gorgeous, first of all. It's a really beautiful pasta. Does it look exactly like Maggiano's? Not really. The sauce is a little bit more brown. I noticed the Maggiano one, it was like a little, a little bit of a lighter Alfredo looking sauce. Mmm. Hold up. <laughs> That's really good. You know what this reminds me of? My absolute favorite pasta dish from a chain restaurant was macaroni grills, mushroom ravioli. And holy moly, this is the sauce. Oh my gosh, this is it. Oh, it's so mushroomy. Mmm, it's creamy and it's not too heavy. It's a very light sauce. It's perfect right now. I think more heavy cream would have made it a little heavy. Heavy. The chicken has a really nice punch of herbs. A little on the dry side, just a little bit, not too much. Mmm, the mushroom. Like a little burst of flavor and juiciness with the balsamic vinegar. That's awesome. But comparing prices, Maggiano's is 20 bucks for a bowl of pasta, but all these ingredients is maybe $7. So something to think about. If you can recreate a flavor like this at home, mmm, mmm, uh, mmm, uh, mmm, uh, so good. Overall, I would say this was like pretty medium to me. But my main takeaway from today's pasta dish was marsala. Marsala has such a gorgeous flavor. I'm going to want to put it in all sorts of dishes. This dish has helped me go out of my comfort zone and use a little bit more alcohol and wine in my cooking. I hope you enjoyed watching me taste and recreate Maggiano's Rigatoni D. If you're interested, I'll put in the description box below the original Maggiano's recipe and my modifications, because there were quite a couple. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see you on the next one.